Dharma talk given by the Venerable Sayadaw Upandita Vivamsa at the Mahasi Asanayeta in Rangoon, Burma. Its title is Guidance for Yogis at Interviews. Despite instructions given on how to meditate, there are yogis who are unable to practice properly and to report back on their experiences at interviews with the teacher. Some can practice well but cannot describe properly how they have meditated and what they have experienced. This talk is intended to help such yogis report back properly on how they have meditated, on what they have observed and experienced in the course of their meditation practice. As to the mode of the meditation, the late Venerable Mahadi Theodore's recorded introduction talk for new yogis gives the essential instructions beginning with noticing or observing the primary object of attention in mindfulness, Satipatthana meditation, namely the rising and falling of the abdomen as the yogi breathes. In terms of scriptural explanation, Psychophysical phenomena are taking place all the time in the yogi's person at the sixth sense door. When a sight is seen, the eye that sees and the sight that is seen are physical phenomena, while the resultant eye consciousness that makes one aware of the sight is a mental phenomenon. Similarly, with the experience of sound, smell, touch and thought and of movements of the body such as bending and stretching of the arm, turning or inclining of the body and the taking of steps in walking. Mahasi Theodore has instructed that all these happenings should be closely noticed as and when they take place without missing even trifling incidents. Although Mahasi Theodore's instructions are given in very clear and simple language, yogis still encounter some difficulties when they come to follow them in actual practice. To help yogis overcome such difficulties, meditation teachers at this center have had to explain and demonstrate to beginners how to notice or observe the primary object of attention, the rise and fall of the abdomen. How to notice when other secondary objects of attention, like thoughts and reflections, appear, feelings or sensations arise, or when external stimuli, such as sights and sounds, impinge on the mind or when other acts of behavior take place. These explanations have had to be made repeatedly and as simply as possible for these beginners. Even then some beginners do not quite understand them and cannot put them into practice properly. To obviate such difficulties, the meditation teachers 
have had to devise maxims or aphorisms which are easier to remember. The first of these aphorisms is say in what way you notice the primary object of attention the rising and falling of the abdomen and what you have come to know the result in your consciousness. Again, say in what way you notice the primary object of attention the rising and falling of the abdomen and what you have come to know the result in your consciousness. The primary object of attention to which the mind should be tethered as it were is this rising and falling of the abdomen as the yogi breathes. This is the primary object of meditative attention in the sense that in the absence of any other marked or pronounced object of attention the yogi should be watching or observing it. The mind should also revert to it when a secondary object of attention has been noticed and fallen away. The yogi should be able to tell what she observes or notices of the movement of the rising of the abdomen from the beginning to the end of it. As the yogi inhales, the abdomen begins to rise somewhat rapidly and goes on rising as she continues to inhale. When the yogi ceases to inhale, the rising movement comes to an end. When observing or noticing the rising movement of the abdomen, the entire movement should be experienced and known. The scriptural texts urge that this should be made a matter of practice. Sabbakaya Pattisamvedi. What this exhortation means is that all the physical phenomena involved in the entire rising movement of the abdomen its beginning, its middle and its end should be noticed as continuously as possible that is, without a break the observing mind should fall on and proceed at the same time as the physical movement of the rising abdomen through its three stages the beginning, the middle and the end beginners will not of course be able to notice all the three stages of the movement but they should strive to be able to do so they are urged to strive so that they do not go about the meditation practice lightly and come to the end of a retreat without much benefit and also to ensure serious and sufficient concentration of the mind on the object. Yogis should be able to answer the following questions do you notice the object with enough concentrated attention is there enough concurrence between the object and the noticing mind that is is the noticing mind with the abdomen as it rises and falls moment to moment are you able to notice the movement 
of the abdomen through its successive phases. Are you able to notice the object properly? What is seen? What is encountered or experienced? If you are noticing the object properly. you should be able to report accurately on the object of the concentrated attention and what exactly is the rising movement as truly experienced by you. Now there are two operations involved in this kind of meditative practice. The first is the activity of observing or noticing the object of attention. The second is the resulting consciousness of what is noticed or observed. Only here, with regard to the primary object of attention, the yogi must be able to say if his awareness, resulting consciousness, arises together with his concurrent, with the object of meditative attention, the rising of the abdomen, and its progressive movement. If the two operations take place at the same time, that is, they are concurrent. What does the yogi see or become aware of? Is it the abdomen itself, the manner or mode of its arising, or the tension and the movement involved in the rising of the abdomen? There are three aspects to the material, physical component or the element of the rising abdomen. They are classified into one, form and shape aspect, two, manner or mode aspect, and three, essential character or quality aspect. The form or shape aspect is the form or shape of the abdomen on which the yogi's mind is focused. The whole body has form or shape, so also the abdomen, a part of the body. It also has the form and shape aspect of the physical element of the rising abdomen. The mind experiences this as an image. The manner or mode aspect. This is the condition or state of the abdomen at any particular moment. Thus, is the abdomen in a flat inflated or deflated state. In Pali scriptural terminology, this condition or state is called akara. Another example of akara is the palm closed into a fist or is it just an open palm? Still another example is the body in a sitting, standing, walking or lying posture. If yogis intently observe the abdomen in meditation, they will see, become aware of, either the form and the shape or the mode and the manner aspect before they see, 
the essential character or quality aspect. But seeing the form and mode aspects is not vipassana insight. The yogis must go beyond the form and mode aspects. That is, they must see, experience, the essential character or quality aspect, namely the tension and the motion or movement manifested during the rising of the abdomen. If yogis observe intently, they will see, experience, this character or quality aspect. They must be able to report it at interviews, but they must say so on the basis of what they actually saw, not what they think they saw. The report must be based on their own actual Vipassana insight. Similarly, yogis must be able to observe or see when breath is exhaled and the abdomen falls progressively and report accordingly. So also, during the walking chankama meditation, as you lift the foot, is the observation concurrent with the lifting movement from the beginning to the end? If so, what is seen? Do you see the foot or the mode or manner of its lifting? Or do you feel the foot becoming light and rising upward? Or the foot becoming tense and being pushed? The yogi must be able to report on any of these three aspects and his attention must be concentrated for him to be able to report in this way. When he thrusts his foot forward in the course of his step taking, is his mind observing or noticing concurrently with the thrusting movement of the foot? Here also, what does he see? Does he see, as it were, the foot or the manner or mode of its thrusting? Or some essential character or quality of this movement, such as the foot being pushed from behind or pulled from in front? Similarly, when he drops the foot, is he able to observe or notice the dropping movement progressively from the beginning to the end till it touches the ground? If he is, what does he come to know? Does he know the foot? or the manner of its dropping, or some essential character or quality of this movement, such as the foot becoming light and soft. Similarly, with observing or noticing of other objects of attention, such as bending and stretching of the limbs, turning or inclining of the body, assuming the sitting posture or the standing posture. 
With regard to these phenomena also, is the yogi able to observe or notice the phenomena concurrently with its appearance from the beginning to the end of its manifestation? It is important to confine reporting to the particular object of attention in its three aspects as mentioned above and not to wander off into reporting on stray and random occurrences. Now what is the essential character or quality aspect? They are the following three marks or characteristics of psychophysical phenomena. Number one, Sabhava Lakana. Number two, Sankata Lakana. And number three, Samanya Lakana. Sabhava Lakana means the specific or particular mark or characteristic of physical and mental phenomena. As for the physical phenomena, there are four elements. The first is Patavi Datu, or the element of extension. The particular or specific mark or characteristic is manifested as hardness or softness, such as bone or flesh, respectively. This mark or characteristic belongs only to Patavi Datu and not to any of the other three remaining elements. The second element is Tejo Datu, the element of heat and cold. The third is Apo Datu, the element of cohesion and fluidity. And the fourth, Vayo Datu, the element of motion. All these Sabhava Lakanas belong to physical phenomena. The particular marks or characteristics of mind is firstly consciousness or the faculty of awareness, secondly that of Pasa which is the colouring of mind as it makes contact with another phenomenon and thirdly that of Vedana which is the capacity of feeling. Now each and every particular mark or characteristic of all psychophysical phenomena has a beginning, a middle, and an end. In Pali scriptural language, these are termed Upada, Titi, and Banga. Upada means the beginning or arising of a phenomenon. Titi is duration or continuance or proceeding towards dissolution. Bhanga is breaking up or dissolution. These three marks or characteristics are called Sankata Lakana. Sankata here meaning compounded or conditioned. 
the third mark or characteristic of all psychophysical phenomena is called samanya lakana. Samanya meaning general or common. There are three common or general marks or characteristics of all conditioned phenomena. They are impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and impersonality. In Pali scriptural language these three marks or characteristics are termed anicca lakana characteristic of impermanence dukkha lakana characteristic of ill suffering or unsatisfactoriness and anatta lakana characteristic of egolessness or impersonality these characteristics are common to all physical and mental phenomena and are pervaded by them. They are therefore designated as Samanya Lakana, common or general marks or characteristics. So to recapitulate, there are three characteristics which have been mentioned and explained. The first was Sabhava Lakana, the particular or specific character or property of phenomena, the four elements and the three marks of mind. Sankata Lakana, the mark or sign of conditionality, namely arising, continuance and dissolution of all phenomena. And thirdly, Samanya Lakana, the common or general characteristics. Of these three, our meditative practice is directed towards the realization of the first, the Sabhava characteristic of material and mental phenomena. That is, the four elements and the three marks of mind. How do we go about our meditative effort to realize this character or property of phenomena? we should observe or notice these phenomena as and when they arise. Only when we do so will we realize their specific or particular quality or character and not otherwise. Before inhalation there is no rising of the abdomen. As the yogi inhales, the abdomen rises. The yogi's mind should go on observing the rising movement of the abdomen from its beginning to its end. Only then will the yogi be able to see the real nature of this movement. What is its real nature, character or quality? With the in-breath, the wind comes in. And what is wind? It is the element of tension, the element of movement. This is its real nature. This is the real nature of the movement that the yogi comes to see or experience. He will see, as it were, 
only when he observes and notices the movement as and when it arises and continues to do so till it passes away. If he does not so observe or notice, he won't see even its form or shape aspect or its mode or manner aspect not to speak of its true or essential character aspect. Continuing to pay concentrated and concurrent attention to the object of meditation that is the rising and falling of the abdomen as the yogi breathes in and breathes out, she will progressively strengthen her concentrated power. As the concentration strengthens, she will no longer see the form or shape of the abdomen or the mode or manner of its rising and falling. Insight will go beyond these sights and will enable her to see the tension, the pressure and the movement involved in the movement of the abdomen which she is observing and noticing. As the yogi breathes out she will experience the tension subsiding and the falling movement of the abdomen coming to an end. Similarly, with the movements involved in walking meditation, the lifting of the leg, pressing it forward and dropping and placing it on the ground. The meditation teacher will not tell the yogi what they are going to see but will instruct them how to observe and notice. It is the same as with an arithmetical sum. The teacher will not give an answer but will teach how to work it out. The same instructions apply in the case of different kinds of bodily movement, sensations experienced in the body and thoughts arising in the mind. All these should be noticed as and when they arise in order to ensure that their true nature may be seen. We have dealt with the first aphorism. True nature will be revealed only when phenomena are noticed as and when they arise. True nature will be revealed only when phenomena are noticed as and when they arise. The second aphorism says only when sabhava, true nature, is seen will sankata lakana, the characteristic of conditionality, become manifest. Meaning that the phenomenon being noticed will be seen to arise, to continue and to pass away. When Sankata Lakana is seen, Samanya Lakana will appear. These two characteristics, Sankata Lakana and Samanya Lakana, will manifest themselves as a matter of course once Sabhava Lakana has been grasped 
by the concentrated and concurrent noticing of the object of meditation. Samanya Lakana, when it appears, will reveal the impermanent, unsatisfactory, and impersonal or involuntary character of phenomena. So the third aphorism is only when Sankata becomes apparent will Samanya be seen. This will be followed by the fourth aphorism which says when Samanya is seen Vipassana Jnana insight knowledge emerges. After its emergence Vipassana Jnana will gradually mature and ripen and will be followed by Maganyana path knowledge which in turn will be succeeded by the Ariya Maganyana noble fully fledged path knowledge which will enable the yogi to realize Nibbana with the cessation of the psycho-physical phenomena and of suffering. So in reporting please remember to report what you have actually seen not what you think you have seen. Only what you have seen is your own jnana that which you know not what you think you have which at best is borrowed second-hand knowledge which is not in conformity with the real nature or character of the phenomenon which you have observed or noticed. While the yogi is sitting in meditation observing or noticing the primary object of attention namely the rising and falling movements of the abdomen various thoughts and objects of mind may occur this being the very nature of mind which is not subject to control the mind has a tendency to wander leaving the primary object and going on to all kinds of ideas some wholesome others not wholesome what should the yogi do then? Just notice whatever comes into the mind. Are you able to do so or not? You should be. If you do, does the thinking go on? Or is it arrested? Or does it vanish altogether? Or does your attention revert to the regular primary object of attention. You should be able to report all that takes place in these aspects. The next aphorism is all thoughts observed and known should be reported. All thoughts observed and known should be reported. For novices in meditation, feelings or sensations may not arise while they are focusing attention on the primary object, but thoughts are likely to occur. Even then, the novice is not able to notice all thoughts that arise. In order to minimize such stray thoughts, the beginning yogi should focus the attention as closely as possible on the primary object. But when the yogi has sat in meditation for 5, 10 or 15 minutes, 
certain unpleasant sensations in the body are apt to arise with corresponding effects on the mind. When feelings or sensations arise, they should be noticed. When reporting, it is better to describe in plain everyday language as itching, aching, numbing, or tingling, and so on, rather than in scriptural language, such as Vedana, feelings. These feelings, which arise spontaneously, should be noticed in the same manner as above, whether they are intensifying, weakening, stabilizing, or disappearing. So the next aphorism is, all feelings, sensations, should be observed, known, and reported at interviews. All feelings, sensations, should be observed, known, and reported at interviews. Next, what other phenomena are there to be noticed and known? They are sights seen, sounds heard, odors smelled, food tasted, and then mental phenomena such as liking, transgressing, sloth and torpor, distractedness, anxiety, doubt, remembrance, clear comprehension, attention, satisfaction, delight, tranquility, serenity or calm, ease of meditation, and so on. The Buddha has collectively termed these as Dhammaramana, mind objects. Suppose a liking arises. When it is noticed, what happens? Liking is followed by craving. The yogi should be able to report this as an experience. Take another example. The yogi is experiencing sloth and torpor and feebleness of mind. When he notices these states of mind, distractedness arises. What happens when these are observed and noticed in turn? Whenever these mind objects arise, they should be observed. In summary, the following are the four objects of attention in Satipatthana Vipassana Bhavana Insight Meditation Through Mindfulness First, Acts of Bodily Behaviour Second, Feelings or Sensations Third, Acts Within Consciousness or Thought Four, Mind Objects Three events occur in such meditation in successive order. A. A rising of phenomenon. B. Observing or noticing of the phenomenon that arises. And C. What the yogi comes to know and see. The next aphorism requires all that happens thus to be understood. The last two, B and C, are the concern of the yogi, the observing and noticing, and what the yogi comes to know. For every object of attention belonging to the four categories listed above, it is important to understand these three successive events mentioned above. The yogi's concern is to observe or notice. The aphorism for this is what arises, what is observed and what comes to be known and seen should be understood completely and reported at interviews. What arises, what is observed and what comes to be known and seen should be understood completely and reported at interviews.